Option trading, you know, it's so complicated, isn't it? It is. Well, since I'm a designer, I want to use my design skills to help solve this very, very interesting problem to explain option trading in the simplest, humanly understandable way possible. And in today's video, I'm going to go over put credit spreads. I'm going to walk you through the fundamentals, the risk reward profile, how to open a put credit spread on Robinhood, why is it such a popular strategy, and when is a good time to use it, etc, etc, and etc. I will have a one minute, three minute, and five minute version of what a put credit spread is, easing you from high level principles to nitty gritty details. Ready to up your option trading game? Let's get into the intro. Morning everyone, my name is Justin, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley and I'm here today to use design to help explain put credit spreads. Option trading is like a video game and you will follow a skill tree. You do need to understand buying puts and selling puts before understanding put credit spreads. Otherwise this video just doesn't make sense to you. I will have the links up here and description down below. And as you know my style, you don't have to smash the like button just yet today in the end if you find this video useful and insightful. Hold me accountable. Now without further ado, let's turn on my designer mind and let's dive right into it. And let's start with the one minute version. A put credit spread is selling a put and buying another put at a lower strike price. Imagine you have a pat of butter and then you use a knife to spread it towards the lower strike direction. Then you have a put credit spread. If you spread from here to here, you will have a 670, 660 put credit spread. You open this position if you believe that Tesla stock will not drop below 670, the high strike. If you spread from here to here, you have a 650, 645 put credit spread, with which you don't think Tesla stock is gonna drop below 650, again, the higher strike. It's called put credit spread because once you open a position, you will right away receive the money. You get cash, you get that credit. If I sell a 670 put and buy a 665 put to open this 670, 665 put credit spread position, I will get $265 cash. I receive this $265 credit right away. And that is the one minute version. You got it, right? And now let's take a look at the three minute version. A put credit spread involves two put option contracts. You sell one and you buy another one. The one that you sell will have a higher strike price than the one that you buy. This is always true. If the put you buy has a higher strike price, then that is no longer put credit spread. It turns into a put in debit spread, which is a video for another time. As you can see up here, Robinhood will tell you what spread you open. So it's always good to double check up here to see if you're actually opening a put credit spread position. So uh, why do I get the money right away? The reason you receive money first with a put credit spread is that the put that you sell gives you more money than the put that you spend on buying. In the example of a 650, 645 put credit spread, selling a 650 Tesla put will give me $2,515 cash and buying a 645 put costs me $2330. So the net is a positive $185. The highest strike price put is always, always, always more expensive than a lower strike put. You can look at it right here, a 670 put is more expensive than a 660 put, which is more expensive than a 650 put, so on, so on, so on, and so forth. Therefore, it makes total sense that what you receive from selling a high strike put is more than what you spend on buying a low strike put. As a result, you net positive, you receive credits, and you make cash right away. Amazing, right? Hmm, it sounds a little unreal. What's the catch? Well, there are things to pay attention to. When you open the put credit spread, yes, you receive the credits first, but you also need to stash some money away as collateral. That amount depends on the strike difference. For a 650, 645 put credit spread, your broker will require a $500 collateral. That $500 will be taken away from your account temporarily, and you won't be able to access that $500 collateral unless you close this position or both of these puts expire. If by expiration date, Tesla's stock price is above 650, both the 650 and the 645 put contract will become worthless. If you don't know why, maybe it's a good time to refresh your memory by watching the buying put and selling put videos again. The $500 collateral will be released back to you. You net with a $185 profit that you gain from the beginning. You keep all of it. If Tesla's stock price ends up, let's say 600, way below your lower strike put, 645, you will not get your $500 collateral back, meaning you will lose all $500. 
but since you gain 185 credits cash in the beginning, so your net loss is 185 minus 500 equals 315 dollars. If Tesla share price ends up between 650 and 645, you can net positive or negative, depend on where exactly. And that is the three minute version of what a put credit spread is. Now let's get into the five minute version, a bit more nuance and events, but a lot of good stuff. In a put credit spread, you sell a higher strike price option contract and at the same time, buy a lower strike put option contract. We can use the same example and let's break it down one by one. If you sell a 650 put alone, your collateral will be 65K. Your max profit will be $2,515. You want Tesla stock to stay above 650 to keep the full 2515 profit. However, when you also buy a 645 put along with the 650 put that you sell, your risk profile becomes quite different. Spending 2330 on buying a 645 Tesla put, you want Tesla stock to go down because that's how you profit. You think it's gonna go down, that's why you buy a put. Just to posting these two contracts together, you will see for selling 650 put, you want Tesla stock to go to stay above 650. You don't want it to go below. On the other hand, for buying a 645 put, you want Tesla stock to go below 645. The collateral now becomes only $500 instead of 65K from selling the 650 put alone. Buying a 645 put essentially protects you from the downside because even if Tesla stock tanks to like $400, yes, you'll be losing a lot of money from the 650 put that you sell, but the 645 put that you buy will make you a lot of money as well. The net effect is that the 645 put that you bought will cap your losses, which is great. The maximum you can lose in this position is 650 minus 645 times 100, which is $500, which is exactly your collateral. The max loss for a 650, 640 put credit spread is 1,000. That for a 650, 600 per credit spread is 5,000. You see the pattern? It's always the difference between those two strike prices times 100. The outcome of any put credit spread has five different scenarios. I'm gonna use the same 650, 645 put credit spread example. If Tesla stock ends above 650, you win, you keep 185, $500 collateral gets released back to you. Second case, if Tesla stock ends below 645, you lose. You keep 185, but you lose the collateral for 500. So your net loss will be 315. If Tesla stock ends at 648.15, that's when you break even. You keep 185, but you also lose 650 minus 648.15 times 100, which is also 185. So you net zero, you break even. If Tesla stock ends between 648.15 and 650, you profit a little bit. Let's say it ends at 649. You keep the original 185, but you lose 100 bucks. So you will net $85 profit. If Tesla stock ends between 648.15 and 645, you lose a little bit. This is a chart that I designed. You cannot really find it anywhere else. Robinhood has an interactive chart, but I think it's a bit too mathematical. Not the best, but at least you have something to work with. If the condition to win is Tesla stocks staying above 650, then why do you want to open a 650, 645 per credit spread versus just selling a 650 put? That can be summarized in one word, leverage. Leverage means you can use a small amount of money to win big. That's why put credit spreads are so popular. We can look at the same put credit spread. It requires only $500 collateral and you can have a max profit of 185. So to use 500 bucks to make 185, your return of investment, your ROI will be 37%. You make 37% profit in one week with this weekly put credit spread. The average return for SPY is about 10% per year over time, but you can make 37 profit in one week? Unreal, right? On the other hand, with just a 650 put, it requires 65K collateral, and your max profit is 25.15, meaning a 3.9% ROI. The contrast is pretty stark, right? Totally, totally. You need way more money to begin with. You make more dollar amount, but way, way less percentage of return. If you only have 500 bucks in your account, there's no way you can open a 650 put by itself. But you can certainly do a put credit spread. Mm. 
It's so good. What's the catch? Well, leverage amplifies both the reward and the devilish risk. If you only have 500 bucks in your account with a 650, 645 per credit spread, and Tesla ends at 630, you lose all your collateral and you only keep the 185. Net loss, 315, which is the 63% of your capital gone in one week. That's sad. In contrast, by just selling a 650 put, if Tesla stock ends at 630, whether you close the position or you're okay being forced to buy 100 shares at 650 with that 65 key collateral, your net loss is 2K, which is only 3%, which sounds a lot better, right? If you were forced to get exercised on and keep those 100 shares, hold them and wait for Tesla shoot up to $1,000 after they have another record earning, then you will end up netting very, 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 very positive. But with a put credit spread, if you lose, you lose. There's no holding, waiting for you to recover from it. Mm, okay, when it's good to open a put credit spread? Well, in my humble opinion, I can only think of two reasons. One, I'm very, very confident that Tesla is going to stay above 650 for me to open that 650, 645 per credit spread. Or I have a very small account and I want to win big and I don't mind losing all 500 bucks. Then you should be okay. All right, we have covered quite a lot today on looking okay, at put credit spreads in three different ways. One minute, three minutes, and five minutes. Is the breakdown useful? Which version is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section down below. Buying puts and selling puts are two very fundamental traits you need to know in options. Do you ever wonder how they work behind the scene and how they would play out in real life? I've used my best design thinking and craftsmanship skills to capture them in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Smash the like button, subscribe to help support the channel. Keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers.